Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello, my name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this nifty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. And can I leave this book with you for you to just peruse? Hello, my name is... Doug Bundy, uh, formerly known as Elder Bundy, when I too was out there uh, ringing doorbells as these young missionaries and hoping to find people to listen uh, to our message. Well, uh, today though, this is Voices from the Dust uh, TV for Wednesday, the 15th day of January 2014. We welcome you to our show uh, where we share the reason for the hope within us and uh, the reason why Latter-day Saints are Christians and why you should be too. We welcome you uh, especially today. Uh, here we are now just a little more than two weeks, halfway through the first month of uh, the first year of 2014. Amazing. But uh, we uh, uh, hope that you will enjoy the show today. We, we we always try to explain here what distinguishes LDS doctrine from non-LDS doctrine and also why we declare that the only salvation remaining for the Gentiles is for them to repent, to be baptized, and to thus to be identified in the same covenant and to worship at the same altar as Israel. We normally do that on our show, but today we're going to see that uh, we had a wider audience and we're able to do that on uh, a bigger show, The Heart of the Matter. Um, this uh, message is hard for many to accept and uh, because it implies that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is what it claims to be, the Church of the Lamb of God established by the hand of God Himself. And this doesn't sit well with people who think uh, there isn't any just one specific church that Jesus uh, Christ established by his own hand. Uh, but that's why it's called the Church of Jesus Christ, is because he did. And that's the claim of the Mormons, as difficult as that is for many to swallow. Why should anyone have to repent, or everyone have to repent and become a Mormon? Why would uh, God require that, people ask? But the reason is the same today. Uh, as it was in the days of Noah when he was sent by God to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, a destruction is coming. Not, not a flood as before, but a fire that will burn the wicked and leave them neither root nor branch. But uh, uh, the Lord then has set his hand to gather in his people from Egypt, he says. This is the thing to understand. Uh, it's Egypt in quotes, of course. And we're not all in Egypt today as it, we were in the days of Moses, but it's the same thing to gather us from out from the world. And it will uh, end up being so dramatic that it will, it will actually eclipse, the scriptures say, the prophets say, uh, the, those things that happened when uh, Moses led them led the house of Israel out of uh, the real land of Egypt to their land of promise. So, uh, but the Lord is doing that to gather together uh, His people that they may be safely uh, uh, protected from the storm just as a hen gathereth her chicks beneath her wings uh, to protect them from the storm. Well, uh, in the days of... Um, Noah, those who repented and were baptized, were caught up to 
the city of Zion. But in our day, those who repent and who are baptized are not caught up to the city of Zion in heaven, but are commanded to build up the kingdom of God on earth and to establish Zion, preparing for a day when uh, a new city of Zion will be built on earth, a holy city called New Jerusalem, which will be built in the land of America for the people to inhabit and uh, where they will dwell in safety and security and where the power of heaven will come down among them and uh, even the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I will even be in their midst uh, as they prepare and gird up their loins for the day when he returns in glory as the King of David, as the King of Israel and uh, clothed in the brightness of his glory. Now we've discussed some of these things in detail uh, in past episodes of Voices from the Dust Radio, which we were before uh, during most of last year, since August at least, and also uh, for the Voices of the Dust TV. You can access both of these from our um, um, website, VoicesFromTheDust.org, or you can go to our YouTube channel, Voices From The Dust, and access them there as well. Well, last night I was a guest uh, on The Heart of the Matter. That's why we're calling today's show The Heart of the Matter, where Mormonism meets Christianity, they say. Uh, it's a webcast slash TV show hosted by Sean McCraney, and it's been on for several years, though my appearance as a faithful Mormon defending the faith was a first for the show, in that up to the last, up to last night, the policy of McCraney was not to have active Mormons come on the show to defend their faith because they couldn't speak officially for the LDS Church, so it didn't matter what they said. But last night he changed the policy, and I had watched the show for many years but never dreamed that I would one day be a guest on it, let alone the first guest ever to be invited as an active Mormon. That was uh, an honor. And uh, uh, it was uh, uh, the hand of the Lord uh, made it possible. I, I don't see how it could be any other way. It was a miracle. And it would never have happened if it hadn't been for my friend David Bartosowitz. Now, uh, Dave uh, and I, as some of you know, were uh, on Temple Square and he was interviewing me. Uh, there, and you can find that on my YouTube channel and on his YouTube channel, Dave Bartosowitz. And uh, the uh, 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 fact was is that we really hit it off, I thought, anyway, and I think he did too. And I had seen him on television in his show, uh, Have You Experienced Jesus?, where he was interviewing Mormons for, for his show, and... Uh, he presented a question of the week for both Mormons and non-Mormons, and then he compares the two responses in an effort to build bridges between the two, as he likes to say. And uh, so uh, I thought, well, that's a good idea. I can go down there and uh, do that, and I can interview Mormons and see, you know, why they're Mormons, and and uh, that would be great for Voices from the Dust. Although it didn't work out very well that first day, it, this uh, interview with Dave, I was sitting there kind of licking my wounds after being more or less rejected by a couple of Mormons, and uh, and lo and, and I was eating a cookie, which was unfortunate, but but Dave showed up, and uh, to my surprise, there he was suddenly in front of me, and with his microphone in hand, and and uh, explaining how he'd like to do an interview. So I said, sure. I'd like to do that. Well, anyway, it worked out really well, and and uh, he just happened to be um, uh, in the here a couple of weeks ago. We we've, we've talked since uh, the interview, and we've become friends, I think. And and uh, he was, uh, uh, I think, attending the church. Uh, the, they call it the campus. I think they don't call it the church of Sean McCraney here a week or so ago, and and uh, he had seen this billboard that we talked about on yesterday's show, this atheist billboard that they are uh, leveraging off of the LDS I'm a Mormon campaign 
uh, and putting it right in the middle of Salt Lake City to announce their uh, conference that they're having uh, upcoming. Uh, anyway, this was a little devastating for uh, Dave, and he happened to be sharing his discons his concern uh, with uh, Sean McCraney at their at this campus meeting that they have on Sunday, I believe, and. Uh, uh, and how he was sharing with him the billboard and how this whole idea of so many people leaving the, the Mormon church, but not to Christianity, but to atheism. And uh, as they spoke about it, for some reason, I still don't understand why, he thought to bring up uh, the video interview he did with me there on that. And so one thing to led to another, and uh, I was uh, invited to be a guest on McCraney's show. It was shocking. Uh, I thought it would be something between Dave and I, and maybe explaining uh, Dave's uh, uh, idea of sh building these bridges. But uh, um, and no, it turned out to be that Sean McCraney wanted me on his show. Well, looking back, I can see the Lord's hand in this, as I've said, and that uh, humbles me greatly. Uh, but to be honest, I was filled with a great deal of angst. I was praying and asking for others to pray for me at the prospect of standing there alongside this man who has such a popular, severe, and uh, successful, he's been a, a popular, severe, and successful critic of the Mormon Church here in the Salt Lake City Valley, especially, in, but in all the, the region and uh has callers from really all over the United States and even all over the world, I think, sometimes. But uh, but anyway, uh, he asked me to send him a short bio, and I did that. And uh, he wanted, uh, I told him I wanted to know what this was going to be, you know, what I should expect. Would we be sitting down <laughs> at a table and chairs, so to speak, and having a conversation. I'd never seen that happen on his show, uh, but he said, no, we'd be standing up. And so that's how they always do. They stand there behind the pulpit on his set. And and I so then I started imagining that it would just be, you know, he'd do the, some preliminaries, and then uh, he would introduce me, and I'd come up for a few minutes like he has done before with, others and uh, and then uh, uh, he, he would take calls but instead it was uh, it was quite a bit more than that and uh, I did after he ran some promotion material and things and got started he introduced me had me come up right after the prayer and uh, and began to uh, read the bio that I had sent him and and so on, and introduced me, and he's such a great guy, you can't help but like him, but, uh, so there I found myself, uh, standing beside him in the studio in Murray, now, when we got there, uh, in the parking lot, I, uh, was with Dave and his friend Lane, and then, uh, Sean was just pulling up as well when we got there, so I met him, and he said he had 40 questions, a list of 40 questions he wanted to ask me, and that he wouldn't challenge me or confront me in any way on my answers, but would be genu genuinely, genuinely <laughs> uh, trying to understand. So I thought, well, that would be great. And I, I was very uh, at ease with that. The uh, fear, the angst left me. Uh, I think as I uh, met the really friendly people there and and uh, had a great time. Well, so to make a long story show, short, the show went very well. And uh, he even invited me to come back, if you can believe it, next week. So I was floored, to say the least. The question of America in the Bible uh, came up, all kinds of different questions. Some I don't think I handled all that well, but at least they seem to uh, uh, be happy and and uh, and they were really enthusiastic and there was applause intermittently throughout the program. <laughs> uh, they have a big a big uh, monitor there 
you can't see it, of course, on their on their TV. But uh, standing there, you can see it, and I mean it's big. They have two big flat screens, one showing the callers and their names and where they're from, and uh, another one showing what the camera is showing, where you can see Sean and myself standing there. And that was really intimidating. I was, <laughs> I guess they couldn't tell it. All right, maybe you can tell it. I was very <laughs> nervous because I really don't like the way I appear. I mean, he's, this guy's a big hulking guy, right? And I'm this little skinny runt, and I felt <laughs> really, really uh, uh, self-conscious. But uh, anyway, some of the things that came up, uh, America in the Bible, the Koran, and, and uh, of course the blacks, and how how did I handle that when I, be, when I was baptized and they... And the policy of the church was that the blacks couldn't have the priesthood and all, the, and polygamy came up and all kinds of things. We'll play that and we'll talk about those things as soon as it, they make it available on YouTube. Usually it takes a day or two for it to come up. But uh, actually the real conversation uh, was uh, had uh, it took place actually in Dave's car as he and I and his cameraman and good friend Lane discussed the atheist billboard and its implications, uh, which had um, which I had addressed on yesterday's program of Voices from the Dust. And as we discussed those things, uh, we got into uh, uh, lots of, of course, the uh, positions of the church and the and the uh, alleged errors and faults of the leaders of the LDS church as the discussion evolved and uh, and then of course uh, the demise of America that we talk about our awful situation that the Lord we I never really got to bring that up but uh, that that would be important to do but the conversation was so fast and going back and forth <laughs> you just get bits in but it was enjoyable we talked about the demise of America and the apostasy of the American churches, which we have talked about so much on our uh, show here. Uh, it was an animated discussion, to say the least, as I shocked them with the idea that the LDS church was going down, as I put it. I even read to them from section one of the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, though it seems something that was difficult for Dave to comprehend. To my delight, though, uh, Lane... Uh, it seems to be one of those people to whom we refer as being awake. He understood the term global elite right away and the cabal's assault, or assault on America, the, this idea of uh, the uh, shadow government and uh, the Council on Foreign Relations uh, he brought up. So so he was, uh, I, we haven't had a chance to explore thoroughly, I don't know what he believes or understands about 9-11, uh, but uh, he seemed to be awake. So uh, we were talking about then the parable of the Lord in DNC 101, uh, which makes these things so much easier to understand. But see, they had never heard this before. And uh, even though they're former Mormons, and uh, I don't know about Lane, but uh, Dave and Sean, of course, are ex-Mormon missionaries, see, which makes all of this so, so much more interesting for those of us that are involved and I hope for those who are viewers but maybe not we lost some in fact I was able to get enough of this discussion out on the table uh, that they both insisted that I bring it up on the show but I knew that there would not be nearly enough time to do that and I told them so but on the way home after the show we continued our animated discussion of what I like to call the controversy of Zion as the Lord refers to it in the scriptures only this time we focused on the meaning <clears throat> excuse me on the meaning of the fullness of the gospel again Dave seemed to have the hardest time comprehending what I was saying to the point I had to ask him to repeat it to be sure he understood what I was saying the point I was trying to make of course was that everything in the country controversy of Zion as the Lord refers to it in in Isaiah revolves around the question of whether or not Joseph Smith was uh, uh, I forgot this picture is up here it's kind of boring 
uh, to have just one picture there. But uh, Joseph Smith was uh, a called of God. It all revolves around whether or not he's a prophet of God. He's a true prophet or not. Uh, if he was indeed a servant of the Lord called to head up this dispensation of the fullness of times, then the Book of Mormon has to be true, and the Church of Jesus Christ must be the church the Lord promised to establish among the Gentiles if they would not harden their hearts. On the other hand, however, if Joseph Smith was not sent of God and the Book of Mormon is fiction, then the question of whether to find the fulfillment of Isaiah, especially uh, chapter 29, must be answered. Either this work is the Lord's act, his strange act, or we should look for his fulfillment elsewhere. But either way, his promise to proceed to do it must be fulfilled. The Lord's word, of course, especially in all these things that are so important, well, in everything, no matter what, his word does not return to him void. He is God. He's the creator of all things. He knows all things from the beginning. And, uh, of course, his word uh, is, the, even though the, uh, earth will pass away and the heavens will pass away. His word will not pass away, but every tittle and jot, I think they call it, the, coming from the Hebrew uh, way of writing, shall uh, come to pass and be fulfilled. It shall not pass away until it's all fulfilled. So my intent was to show how the two conflicting visions of the end times, remember, which we have been studying on this show, are resolved when it's recognized that America is the land of Zion and the gathering place of the saints where they can feed on the word of God as eagles gather together to feed on, the, on a carcass, as Jesus put it, uh, can, uh, is recognized. That's, a, that's a, 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 something they are not used to hearing. But... Uh, and they were very interested, but many questions kept coming up. Only bits and pieces emerged in the back and forth of the conversation so that uh, this work must be the marvelous. So that I don't think I was able to clearly communicate the idea that this work must be the marvelous work and wonder of the Almighty God of Israel. Hopefully, though, as this uh, novel encounter with former members of the church involved, evolves, they will continue to engage. It's been my sad experience, though, to find uh, that uh, people are unwilling to pursue it on, as uh, we press forward in these things once the conversation starts cutting cl too close to the bo bone there. But I hope not. I hope it works. The words, this is serious, you've got to share it with Sean on the show tonight, were spoken more than once last night. And they're right. It is serious. So uh, I really had a good time. Uh, they were very flattering. They said it really went well and, uh, and everything. And uh, again, I don't know how long that will continue. This is probably the honeymoon <laughs> period. But they have invited me back. Uh, but as soon as I get this stuff out on the table, uh, maybe it... Uh, it will uh, not be like that. So anyway, so I thought what we would do is talk a little bit about uh, Sean's show, The Heart of the Matter, where he uh, has spent so much time uh, in the last, what has it been now, 2006? To, it's been a, a eight years or so uh, that he's been doing this show and he started with the book I watched his first episode yesterday and of course it was all about his book and uh, and it was quite a bit different of course uh, he was a little more uh, subdued and not as confident and and uh, but very determined to share with people what being born again means but uh, I thought then and uh, I have thought uh, many times before that I'm amazed that they think that Mormons don't understand what it means to be born again, to be, he was not the first born again Mormon. They all must be born again. The scriptures uh, make that very clear. But uh, he uh, 
wasn't and of course then they go through over the years they go through uh, the first vision and the theology of the Mormons that uh, uh, in fact I was even asked a question last night on the show and it was impossible there were like 30 seconds left there was no way I could answer but what little bit I did answer kind of took them about back and they and some of the people in the audience were asking me about it and I tried to explain to them and uh, maybe we'll get a, a chance to explain that next week but I thought maybe I would address it today uh, on this program because we ended with it on their program and I think that's probably one of the most important things to understand uh, Joseph Smith again uh, being the center of all things and and uh, the fact that either he did see the Father and the Son as he said or he didn't see depending on where you come down on that question depends or determines uh, the very things that uh, are most important in our lives because uh, if this is the work of Jesus that he promised that he would proceed to do in the days of the Gentiles when they were taking his name in vain when they were blaspheming his name when many of them were praising him with their mouth and drawing near to him with their lips but were hard uh, their hearts were, were uh, uh, far removed from him and uh, if this is not that work then what is see that's the question where is the work where the Lord said he would proceed to do a marvelous work and a wonder where the the uh, wisdom of the wise would perish and the understanding of the prudent would be hid now remember yesterday we were talking about that and saying how who are the wise and who are the prudent, right? I mean, the wise are those who who are uh, adhering, and not adhering so much, well, maybe too, but who are trying to persuade people to believe in the Bible, to have faith in the Bible, in Jesus Christ, and to believe the Bible. And uh, they're showing that the prudent way is uh, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So, how could their wisdom and their understanding of the prudent way uh, perish? I, that was uh, something that that I think is very uh, important for people to understand. Well, uh, if they reject, what well, at the same time that they reject uh, the uh, uh, fullness of the gospel, they're preaching up their wisdom, then their wisdom will perish. Uh, and if this, at the same time they're uh, uh, urging people to follow, to be prudent and follow the uh, the Lord and Jesus, Je uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but then they reject His message and His work outright, then of course their prudence will be hidden. You won't see why. How is it prudent? And uh, it's uh, it's not. And so. Uh, these things have to be settled in people's minds but the reason they're not is because of the cunning of the devil uh, among the Christians they have these creeds that tell them that God was God from the beginning but as Joseph Smith said I will refute that idea <laughs> that is really not one that you understand that God he says was once a man as we are and dwelt on an earth and had to go through this probation of faith and everything that we are going through and uh, and to do the things that were necessary to prove that they would uh, that he would keep the commandments of God uh, uh, as Abraham said the Lord has sent us here to prove and uh, and so having done that and been exalted then he in turn is exalting his children and so a father is a, is a son is a, has a father who has a son and so on a father 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 all the way. you can't really uh, you know, it goes back to infinity right well how can we understand that and this is what they haven't understand and the reason why they accuse uh, the Mormons of being uh, polytheists that they're, they, they believe in many gods, but of course we don't. We believe in the one God. Well, how can that be possible? 
Well, he is the God of this earth and the only God that we have to do with, but also he is one with his Father, who is one with his Father, who is one with his Father. So this unity, this mystery of how they become one ruler is, uh, is what the uh, uh, anti... I, I have the habit of calling them anti-Mormons. I don't think they like that so much, but uh, we'll call them the uh, Gentile Christians or the creedal Christians don't understand. This they don't understand. But it's very clear because, as I pointed out to him last night, the uh, the uh, in their own Bible it teaches these things, and uh, if you follow them out, and we didn't get to go go into the details uh, that uh, you know last night that, that it would be necessary, but the idea that God uh is our heavenly father is not Jesus Christ that they are two separate beings is very important because uh, Jesus becomes the father of the faithful but Abraham's the father of the faithful as well and uh, so this mystery where he is praying to the father uh, acknowledging that he is one with the Father, that the Father is in him, and that he is in the Father, and that his desire is that these disciples of his who were with him as he was making, the, as he was offering this prayer, as he was pleading with the Father, was that they would be one with them as they are with one another. Well, you know this is important to understand and uh, and uh, looks like we have a visitor here that is coming online and man am I happy about that let's see who it is I'm not sure uh, he uh, will find out here in a minute uh, it's probably Al yeah it looks like Al <laughs> it looks like he's coming into view uh, so We'll bring him on here in a minute that we can discuss this and get. Hopefully, he was able to watch the show last night. Al, your your uh, microphone is muted. Uh, do you? I don't know if I if you've muted that. I guess you have. But uh, can you unmute your microphone and uh, and talk to us? Your picture is really bad, <laughs> but we can see that it's you. Uh, and as you adjust, I don't know if you can hear us. Maybe you can't hear us, but as you adjust your camera there, uh, <laughs> the picture, I think you need more light in the room. Uh, it looks like it's very, very dark uh, on our uh, end, and it's very pixelated, and it shows that your microphone is muted. So I don't know uh, if you can hear me, but you need... To mute your microphone if you can. Uh, so anyway, uh, until he's able to talk to us, I'll I'll continue with this story. So, so the idea in the Bible is that uh, God is uh, is not just uh, it's a ruler, it's a title, it's an office, and uh, we say that that a person is God. Uh, but what we're really saying, if we look at the Hebrew language, is that they are a divine ruler, that they are this ruler that knows all, that created all things, and there is no ruler besides uh, him who is our ruler, who is the God of Israel. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to try to uh, communicate to to uh, Al here that his microphone is muted. <laughs> Your microphone, Al. <laughs> you need to talk in a microphone. It's muted. <laughs> Your microphone is muted. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't seem to, to understand, that, understand it. But can't hear you because your mi <laughs> your microphone 
<laughs> I don't know how I can. Uh, it's him that's muted it, not me. <laughs> Mute. Mute it. You need your microphone. You. You need your microphone to be on. <laughs> Turn on your microphone. <laughs> okay, well, there's some light coming on in the room. That's some progress. <laughs> anyway, this I know this doesn't make much for uh, good television, but we're still struggling. As I struggled with the interface, uh, and it took me a week or two to get <laughs> turn turn your microphone on. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could uh, communicate with him. I need to have my iPad to call him, or or the telephone, or something, uh, to tell him that his microphone is muted. <laughs> but uh, he's going to go the whole program without that. Well, I don't have any clips to play or anything that I could put on while I go get the phone and call him and tell him to unmute his microphone so hopefully he will he will look down there see see let's see your uh, microphone is not on <laughs> unmute it go up to the top <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, so we're talking about this doctrine being really from the Bible. And uh, uh, I could pull up scriptures, I guess, but I wasn't really prepared for this. I was hoping Al would be on that we could discuss last night's show, but <laughs> he's got the... <laughs> let, me, uh, let me see what I could do. Um... Maybe uh, I could play um, something that would um, enable us to, to be occupied while I go get the phone and call Al so that he can talk to us. But, uh, okay, let's do this. Uh, I can... Uh, the heart of the matter show. No, uh, I'm not prepared. I'm sorry. This is just taking me surprise. I can't think. I have a one-track mind, and I'm not going to be able to to handle this on the fly. I should be able to call up a past show of Sean McCraney's, uh, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Roy, your microphone, your your microphone. Does not work. It's muted. And go up here. <laughs> oh well, uh, what a disaster! Harsh. <laughs> I'm gonna just maybe I could play play some music and uh, put on the. Uh, A picture of the temple here, and uh, find something so I can go up and get this telephone. I should have brought it down with me. What a mess! Here's a talk, and I'll dear put brothers that on and sisters. Life. I add my voice to that of President Thomas S. Monson and others in praising those who have responded to a prophet's call for more worthy missionaries. Now, an unprecedented wave of enthusiasm for missionary work is sweeping the entire earth. Since President Monson's historic announcement last October, thousands of elders, sisters, and couples have been called, and many more are preparing. Now we get questions like, what are you going to do with all these missionaries? 
the answer is simple. They will do what missionaries have always done. They will preach the gospel. They will bless the children of Almighty God. More of you young men and women will catch this wave as you strive to be worthy of mission calls. You see this as a wave of truth and righteousness. You see your opportunity to be on the crest of that wave. You teenagers embrace your new curriculum and teach one another the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Now is your time to prepare to teach others about the goodness of God. Young men and women, your education is ever important to us, to you, and to God. Where feasible, if you wish to attend a college or university after your mission, we encourage you to apply to your institution of choice before beginning your mission. Many institutions of higher learning will grant an 18 to 30 month deferral to prospective missionaries. This will enable you, elders and sisters, to serve with We are very grateful to leaders of educational institutions who are making such planning possible. You parents, teachers, and others catch the wave as you prepare our rising generation to be worthy of missionary service. Meanwhile, your exemplary lives will attract the interest of your friends and neighbors. Be ready to give an answer to those who ask why you live as you do. Be ready to give a reason for the hope and joy that they see in you. When such questions come, you might respond by saying, let's ask the missionaries. <laughs> they will help us, and if you desire, I will be at your side as the missionaries respond and teach you. Okay, here we're we're going now. His microphone is uh, uh, is no longer muted. It turns out that I had it was muted automatically on my end. That was the problem. But uh, we're going to go back now to Al. Oops, now he's not there. Al, where'd you go? <laughs> Uh, now he's disappeared. Ay, ay, ay. The fun of live uh, broadcasting. But uh, anyway, let me. Uh, there he comes back. All right, put your. <laughs> but, uh, can you hear me now, Al? Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm showing that my microphone is working and uh, yours is no longer uh, muted, so we, you ought to be able to talk to me. Can you talk? Can you hear? Can you hear? <laughs> This is why you got to come on earlier so we, <laughs> we can get all this stuff ironed out before the show starts. <laughs> I don't hear you uh, at all. Uh, uh, no, he went off. He's going to come back on hopefully. All right, well, where was I? So I'm talking about the scriptures in the Bible that talk about the nature of God and uh, man be becoming one with God. See, that's the whole idea that uh, and there's a lot of worlds to, to in the universe to rule out there, lots of planets, and, uh, and the work of the Lord is endless. It's endless going back and it's endless going forward. So the Bible talks about this. It talks about of course, the hope of the Christians. And the hope of the Christians is that they will be exalted uh, on the right hand of God. That they 
as we will become immortal beings. They're, they're raised from the dead, right? And uh, they partake of the divine nature, it says. And, uh, of course, they're cleansed from all sin. So these immortal, uh, sinless, uh, divine beings are then uh, uh, able to sit down in uh, the th on the throne of Christ Himself with Him as He sits with in the throne of His Father. That's what it says, and uh, that the uh, it's just a matter of the of the uh, Christians not understanding their own scriptures, and that's where. It, the Book of Mormon comes in. See, the idea was the Lord said that they that they were in this uh, awful state of blindness, and uh, that, that He was uh, going to take away this uh, um, uh, stumbling block from them, and the and the thing to take it away would, would be the Book of Mormon. So uh, here we are then, and but they fighting against it. They don't. Their hearts are hardened against it. They uh, say that we worship another Jesus. That they they say that you know the temple ordinances. They in fact, uh, unfortunately, uh, Sean McCraney even showed the whole temple ceremony on his show. Uh, I didn't watch it. I wouldn't. I refused to watch it. But uh, the uh, they mock, they scorn, and and I'm really afraid for them because the Lord says that uh, the scorners will be uh, consumed as uh, also the uh, watchers for iniquity and those who uh, uh, make man, a man an offender for a word. We were talking about that last night when they brought up some of the their objections to Joseph Smith that on in this talk he boasted that he'd done even what Jesus wasn't able to do in keeping the church together which Jesus never done nor any did nor he, any of the apostles and but he wasn't serious uh, in that he he was under duress and it was during a time and this is only reported by those uh, who were his enemies. We don't know what he actually said or how he said it. It wasn't exactly like we got a sound bite uh, from him. So they make him an offender for a word. And uh, all of those who make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate uh, will be consumed along with all of the scorners, the Lord says, and that's a result of this great and marvelous work that is coming forth. So, um, well, rather than trying to talk off, continue to talk off the top of my head about things like this, I was hoping Al would be here and we would be able to discuss last night's show. But uh, he's gone. I guess he gave it up. I don't know what the problem is. But uh, we'll uh, take it up tomorrow and hopefully maybe tomorrow or the next day the YouTube video of the uh, Heart of the Matter show that we're talking about will be available and, and uh, we'll make this a, a better show. But for now I want to hope everybody will have a good day uh, and uh, pray that the Lord's choicest blessings will be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.